Hey everyone, so in this video, I want to basically show you how to buy any altcoin that's out there. There's a lot of confusion because sometimes you want to buy a coin, you get stopped because there's hundreds of apps and all these exchanges you've never heard of. And it's this big process to buy a lot of altcoins and you just get stuck and don't do anything. This is actually the case for 99% of the altcoins out there. They're just really hard or confusing to buy if you're a beginner. So I went through this process. I've tried tons of exchanges, downloaded tons of wallets and apps over the years. And there's hundreds of options out there, but there's like six or seven apps that I use that let me buy maybe 80% of the altcoins or something like that. But this info would have been really helpful when I was just starting out. So I'm gonna share it with you. Hopefully these tips help you navigate through the crypto world a little bit better. So let's jump right in. As of today, there are over 9,000 altcoins on CoinMarketCap. That is crazy. So when I started, I had no idea how to buy 99% of coins. But I've been exploring crypto and I found out all I really need is six or seven apps right here. There's hundreds of exchanges and wallets and apps, but these six or seven let me buy basically thousands of options. So quick summary of these apps and then I'll go more into detail in the video. Newton is one of the cheapest Canadian exchanges out there. I deposit my Canadian dollars here. This also has low fees for withdrawing your crypto, which is important. Then there's the Trust Wallet, Binance, Coinbase Wallet, and those other options that let me get those lesser known coins. And that's it. You just figure out how to use these and you could pretty much buy any altcoin that there is. And I'll also show you how to buy the options that aren't available on these apps. So let's just jump right in. The first step in buying any altcoin is simply having a Canadian exchange to convert your dollars into crypto. So if you look at this picture, you start with your bank and that's where you have your Canadian Canadian or US dollars or whatever. Step one is just to send that to a crypto exchange. Now you can go directly to these exchanges to buy these random coins, but that's not ideal. It's gonna be expensive if you go directly here. That's why you wanna start by having a Canadian exchange that will be like your home base. You're not gonna buy thousands of altcoins here, but its main purpose is to convert your dollars into crypto without crazy fees. Once you have that, then you can send your crypto to these other places. And obviously you can buy some altcoins on Canadian exchanges, but not many. The most you'll find is around 10. When selecting your primary exchange, you wanna look for a few things. It's gonna be your main on-ramp and off-ramp for buying crypto and cashing out as well. So you want it to be trustworthy, you want it to be reliable, and you especially want it to have low fees because you're gonna be sending crypto in and out of here. The first thing to look for is low crypto withdrawal fees. So when you're sending crypto out, you don't wanna be paying 50 bucks a transaction. That's the first price to check. I wish I knew that sooner, I would've saved a lot of money. And then you wanna check the other fees like trading fees and then deposit and withdrawals to your bank. That should be free. And those are the main fees I look for. I already tested 11 exchanges in Canada and Newton is the best overall. I'll link it below if you wanna get $25 free. That's what I use personally. So now that you have your main primary exchange and you're ready to buy these lesser known altcoins how do you go about doing that so the next tip if you want to be buying random altcoins and exploring crypto is you need to just get used to the idea of downloading new apps all the time signing up for random exchanges you've never heard of and mentally prepare for that because you're going to need to do it a lot the thing with crypto is there's no singular place to buy everything crypto is so new and there's literally hundreds of platforms and apps and companies and that's the reality i'm going to show you some apps in this video but who knows if they're going to be around five years from now so the most important thing is just to be ready to adapt, ready to try new platforms. And that's gonna be key when you're in crypto. And also don't be loyal to any companies either because stuff is always changing. So just be ready to adapt and try new apps. So for the rest of the video, we'll go more into specifics. So the first thing you have to do is find out where you can buy your altcoin. So I start with CoinMarketCap. So let's say there's a coin you want to buy. I would go to CoinMarketCap and I would search that coin. So as a random example, I'm just gonna do SafeMoon. And then I would search the coin on CoinMarketCap and and then it would take me here. And then I'll just quickly glance at the market cap. Sometimes it doesn't show it. And then I'll just look at this column here and I'll look at the volume as well. Generally, the higher the volume and the higher the market cap, the easier it's gonna be to buy. So I'll glance at that. And then if you scroll down, you could see here it's on overview and then there's market. You wanna click on market. And then this will actually show you every place where you can buy this coin. And this works for every coin on coin market cap for the most part. And you can see these are all the places I can buy it. So most of these I've never heard of. There's gate.io, there's PancakeSwap, MXC, Bitmart, and you get the idea. So I've heard of PancakeSwap, but let's say I've never heard of these. Then I'm judging like, okay, these are the places to buy it. How do I know which ones are good? How do I know which one I should use? Because this is gonna happen a lot. You're gonna see places you've never heard of. So what I'll do is then I'll just go to this column here where it says volume, and then I'll sort by the top. And I could see this coin is most popular on PancakeSwap. It has $20 million in volume. And then the second most popular is Bitmart. And then you just go down the list. The reason you do it by volume is you wanna go where it's most popular. If you trade it here, for example, there's not much volume. So it might be harder to sell 
it and trade it and you might pay more fees. So you generally want to go where there's more volume. And the smaller the coin is, the less options you're going to have for buying it. So if I just go to like another random example, say I go to Bitcoin Cash and click market, you can see there's way more options here. This is a huge coin, obviously, right? So there's literally hundreds of exchanges for Bitcoin Cash. But when you get to like these smaller coins, such as SafeMoon and other examples, there's very limited options. So again, you want to just go where there's the top volume. And then I've decided, okay, it's probably best to buy it on BitMart or PancakeSwap. Let's say I've never heard of these, then I'll just start researching them. I'll be like, is Pancake Swap trustworthy? And then I'll just go down the rabbit hole and research on Google 10 to 20 minutes. You have to do this for the exchanges, find out if it's safe, if people are using it, um, take a look at it, look at reviews. Also, sometimes the coin won't be listed on Coin Market Cap. So let's say another random example is I want to buy this coin and I'm trying to find out where I can buy it. And as you can see, there is no info, there's no markets tab where I can see where to buy it. Coin Market Cap doesn't have everything. If that's the case, I'll go to Coin Gecko, which is a similar website. And and usually if coin market cap doesn't have it you can find it on coin gecko and as you can see go here markets same thing and then you could see i could buy it on uniswap that's the workaround and then you could also go on the tokens website and see where you can buy it if it's not on either of these platforms so that's how i find where to buy the coins and how to choose the platform i buy it on it involves research but eventually you'll know which apps are popular you'll just get familiar with most of them now the cool thing is most of the coins can be bought using just a handful of apps which i'll get into now so i already covered newton earlier that will be your primary exchange that's where everything starts it doesn't have to be Newton, but that's what I recommend. With these options, you will literally know how to buy thousands of coins, which is awesome. So let's cover each one quickly. So first off, let's cover Uniswap. This is one of the popular ones you'll see a lot. As you can see, they have over 35,000 pairings. So there's at least thousands of coins just on here. And when you're researching coins, you'll see a lot of them are listed on Uniswap. So it's good to know how to use this platform. So what is Uniswap? Well, it's a decentralized exchange built on top of Ethereum. So because it's decentralized, there's no KYC required to make an account. You don't need to show them an ID or an email address or your identity. It's decentralized. Centralized, so all you need to do is have an Ethereum wallet, connect to it, and then you could trade all the coins that are on it. Really cool. To use Uniswap, I downloaded the Coinbase wallet. I set that up. I'll send Ethereum there from Newton or ShakePay. Then I'll go incognito on the Uniswap website and connect my wallet by clicking up here and then scanning the QR code through my Coinbase wallet. I still recommend watching a couple tutorials on this. There's a bunch on YouTube, but that's the general overview. It's pretty easy. And with just 10 to 30 minutes of tutorials, you can learn that. Once you figure out Uniswap, you'll have access to most of the altcoins out there. Now lastly, one big downside with Uniswap is that it's on Ethereum and Ethereum has very high fees right now. So it's April 2021 and each transaction can cost anywhere from $30 to $150 in fees, which is obviously a lot. So until the fees get lower, it doesn't really make sense to use Uniswap for small transactions. Keep that in mind. Next up is PancakeSwap. This is another platform similar to Uniswap where you get tons of other coins. And instead of high fees due to the Ethereum, PancakeSwap is actually very cheap. It's on something called the Binance Smart Chain and these fees are extremely low. Like a couple dollars or much less compared to 30 to 150 dollars on Uniswap. So it's much cheaper. I've been using this a lot more than Uniswap just because of the fees. To use PancakeSwap in Canada, there's two things you need. One is I downloaded the Trust Wallet, which can be on iOS or Google Play. And two, you need to open a Binance account. So first, let's look at the Trust Wallet. This is what it looks like. When you open it, you can click on dApps at the bottom of the screen here and then click PancakeSwap. And then you can actually use PancakeSwap without leaving the Trust Wallet app, which is great and super easy. Now to make trades on here, we need to have BNB. So we need to send BNB to our trust wallet and that's where our Binance account comes in. This is what Binance looks like. It takes a couple of minutes to sign up. I believe all you need is an email address and you can get going really quickly. Then you send crypto here from Newton. You trade that for BNB. That's how you get the BNB token. And then you send your BNB to your trust wallet and that's how you can trade coins on PancakeSwap. I'll have links to everything below if you want to sign up for Binance and get some bonuses. Now the cheapest way to fund your Binance account is to open Newton, buy Stellar, and then send that Stellar to Binance. That way Newton will cover all the withdrawal fees and it'll cost zero dollars to send it to Binance. That's how I do it in the cheapest way. If you want a step-by-step walkthrough on how to fund your Binance account, I'll put a link to the video that I made. The other good thing with Binance is they also have over 350 coins on the platform, which is hundreds more than any Canadian exchange. So you can also use Binance to trade altcoins. So to summarize, we would buy Stellar on Newton, send it to Binance because it'll be free, then trade it to BNB, and then send that to our trust wallet that we downloaded. And then you're ready to trade any altcoin you want that's on PancakeSwap and Binance as well. So now you have Newton, Binance, and you have an overview on Uniswap, and PancakeSwap and now you can figure out how to buy the majority of altcoins and even if the coins aren't listed there I've showed you how to use CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko to figure out where to buy these coins that's basically the process to buy any altcoin you want out there and as long as you're ready to try new platforms and adapt and just watch a couple tutorials you can buy anything out there and you're not going to be stopped from exploring crypto and learning more so I wish I knew this stuff sooner hopefully this was helpful for you drop a like if it was these are also not the only ways to do it like I said there's hundreds of platforms this is just what I find easiest and cheapest and this will always evolve over time if you have any questions 
questions or things I didn't cover, drop a comment below. I'll be happy to answer. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.